What should HVAC schools be teaching? What should a good HVAC program consist of as far as material so that they can produce the most successful students in the HVAC industry? Are you thinking about attending an HVAC school but you don't know what school to attend? If you have an idea of what school you'd like to attend and you want to me to evaluate that school to make sure the program or the school is teaching what they should to make sure that they have successful students, comment below, let me know who you are, where you're from, and what what school you're looking into attending and I will call and I'll evaluate that school and that program to make sure it's right. Today I'm going to teach you and give you some insight and show you exactly what HVAC schools should be teaching so that they have the best, most successful students placed in the HVAC industry that can actually experience success. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. A good HVAC school or program will teach its students how to diagnose or replace a failed capacitor, a transformer, and a contactor. A good HVAC program will teach its students how to diagnose a control board, how it works, and how to replace it. How to diagnose and replace and learn the basics of different types of relays. A good HVAC program will teach its students how to diagnose and replace a fan motor and the different types of fan motors that there are, what types of condensate pumps there are, how to diagnose and how to replace different types of condensate pumps. A good school will teach their students how to replace a restricted or failed filter dryer and how to diagnose a failed restricted filter dryer, how to use a turbo torch, how to use an acetylene torch, how to use an oxyacetylene torch set to be able to braze copper. A good school will teach you how to use a vacuum pump, how to hook up the vacuum pump, how to use a recovery machine, how to hook up the recovery machine, how to use a recovery machine with a recovery tank, how to put new vacuum pump oil into your vacuum pump. They should be teaching how to replace a disconnect and the different types of disconnects. They should be teaching you how to replace a breaker and the different types of breakers that you have in the field. You should be learning how to use a shop vac learning what a stopped up drain looks like and how to clear a stopped up drain using a shop vac. You should be learning about float switches and why they're important and how to wire a float switch. You should be learning how to replace a thermostat, what types of thermostats there are, how to diagnose a failed thermostat. You should be learning about thermostat wire, what types of thermostat wire are there, what is thermostat wire used for, what is a low voltage short, how do you find a low voltage short, how do you pull a new thermostat wire. Different types of coil cleaner. You should be learning the different types. You should be learning how to use coil cleaner and how much to use and how to clean an air conditioner. You should be learning about different types of refrigerant and how to charge an air conditioner and how to use superheat and subcooling. You should be learning how to use a knockout kit. You should be learning how to use a hole saw kit. You should be learning how to replace a filter, different types of filters. They should be teaching you how to use nitrogen and a regulator to be able to test for a leak, to be able to braze with nitrogen, you should be learning about gas piping and different types of fittings and how to use a pipe threading machine. You need to know what an extension ladder is and how to use one. Different types of copper, different sizes of copper, different types of wire, different sizes of wire. You should be learning the basics of sheet metal and how to make duct work, the different types of machines that are used, the different materials like the insulation that's used, the different types of insulation, the different types of duct work, square, round pipe, the different sizes, different types of registers, ceiling registers, floor registers, return grills, different sizes, different types of PVC piping, how to run a drain line, what is a trap, what is a TXV, what is a metering device, how does a TXV work, how do you replace a TXV, how do you diagnose a TXV. A good school will be teaching you all about these parts as well. What's a hot surface igniter, how to diagnose it, how to replace it, a burner, how to clean it, how to replace it, a thermocouple, what is a thermocouple, what does it do, how do you replace it, how do you diagnose it, a gas valve, how does a gas valve work, how do you install a new gas valve, how do you check the gas pressure after you install it, and what does it do, sequencer, what is a sequencer, what's it used for, how do you replace it, how do you diagnose it, how do you check it, a pressure switch, how do you diagnose a pressure switch, how do you replace it? What is it used for? You should be learning how to replace and diagnose a failed inducer motor and what an inducer motor is and what it does. You should be learning all about reversing valves and how they work 
and how to replace or diagnose a failed reversing valve. You should be learning the different types of pressure switches and how to check a pressure switch, how to diagnose a pressure switch, and how to replace a pressure switch. You should be learning what types of systems there are. Package units, split units, gas heat, heat pump, mini splits. You should be learning how to write a job invoice and how to communicate well with others. That way you can communicate with the customer and communicate with your team to be able to accomplish your goals better. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. If you got a question, put that down below. I hope that you learned where you need to start when looking for an HVAC school that's good, and a good HVAC program, something that's going to promote success and be able to teach you what I told you should be taught inside of a good HVAC program or a school. If you want more videos like this, you want live experience as an HVAC technician in the field, I've got hundreds of videos on my playlist for you to learn more about being a good technician. On my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians, go check it out. It's under my playlist. If you want in-depth training courses to fast-track your career as an HVAC professional, courses like sales training, geothermal training, how to size ductwork, how to install ductwork, how to price equipment, mini split sizing, and a bunch of other videos, HVAC courses, click the join button, become a member, level three, and you can have access to all my members only videos, my courses on HVAC. If you want to talk to me because you need my personal help, join level one and I will give you my email. Let me know in the comments, say I joined and I will comment and I'll give you my email and that'll lead to contact with me. If you need my phone number, level four, I'll give you my e email first and then I'll give you my phone number so that you can actually contact me. And if you want to be helped by me once a week, one day, and you actually want me to personally train you, I have that option as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you like.